Good morning, church. It is a joy to be with you and to be able to worship with you this morning in this uh, unique way. Uh, and we're so glad that you're tuning in. Whether you're tuning in live or you're watching this later on in the day, we just really appreciate you continuing to make uh, First United Methodist Church in downtown Bentonville uh, a priority and a part of your life. We're working hard to uh, uh, be able to reach out and, and uh, do all the ministry that we can uh, and uh, stay a part of your lives. And so we, we thank you for connecting in. Uh, I want to ask you a quick favor. Please, if you would, uh, be sure to share this right now. Uh, before we get going into anything else, go on and share this video uh, with your friends. Uh, post it all over the interwebs and uh, let everybody know this is happening right now and, uh, uh, and go from there. Also, Please leave your comments um, throughout the uh, service today. In particular, Eric's going to be asking a few questions, and we'd love to hear your responses in those comments sections. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be uh, even highlighting some of the things that you share later on. So uh, be listening for that. This is um, my God, my King. And before we kind of dive into this music, I invite you to take a deep breath. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out love. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe out love. I will sing, sing, sing to my God, my King. For all else fades away. I will love, love, love with this heart.
guide us, Lord, to walk in courage, wisdom, and love. A reading from Psalm 119, 44 through 48. I shall continue to keep your law. I shall keep it forever and ever. I will walk at liberty because I study your commandments. I will tell of your decrees before kings and will not be ashamed. I will delight in your commandments, which I have always loved. I will lift up my hands to your commandments and I will meditate on your statutes. Guide us, Lord, to walk in courage, wisdom, and love. Ammon Hennessy, a Catholic worker, said, Love without courage and wisdom is sentimentality, as with the ordinary church member. Courage without love and wisdom is foolhardiness, as with the ordinary soldier. Wisdom without love and courage is cowardice, as with the ordinary intellectual. My name is Sadie Wolford. It is a blessing and an honor to be in ministry with children and their families during this time. About two months ago, when this strange season started, one of my pastor friends sent me an image of a church, and it said, with church doors closing all over the world, we're about to find out that it was never about the building. And today we are talking about gifts from God. And our congregation this week was given an amazing gift from God. We were given a whole bunch of new members in our congregation um, through 12 confirmations 
of young people, and then two of their families also then joining the church. And we celebrated these special moments in what we referred to as God's sanctuary outside among nature. This was the first time that we had seen any of these kids or families in two months. But our relationships with them are just as strong as they were two months ago. Their mentors and I, through the gift of technology, have stayed in touch with them, have stayed connected with them, have prayed for them, have answered their questions, and have affirmed their journeys. Our congregation has risen to this opportunity that has presented itself over the last two months. We have learned to be more honest, open, and direct with each other. We have learned to communicate very clearly and show up for each other in real ways. There are many that say the church will never be the same after this, and I pray that it isn't. With our mouths covered for the last two months, we've learned to communicate so much more with our eyes. With the church doors closed, we've taken our faith out into the community and across the world. We have not sat back and rested on the idea of going to church as a replacement for being the church. We haven't put our faith in the temple, but in one another. Or as Richard Rohr said, but the temple where God's spirit dwells is the temple that the Lord builds, a community of people who love one another and trust in God. Peace be with you. Good morning. I'm Pastor Eric Meyer. Truly a joy to be worshiping with my family here and, uh, and sending our worship out to you and knowing through your comments and your feedback that we are worshiping together. So I, I do uh, continue to ask that you would share your comments with us so that when we as a, a worship team get home later today, we can look at your comments and uh, be lifted up and, and filled up by uh, having been worshiping with you. We are offering thanks today, thanks for the incredible gifts that God has given to us, and I want to offer um, some of the, uh, the information about the gift that Sadie just mentioned, the, the two new families that have joined our church family, the Thompson family, Josh, Sharon, Audrey, and Miles, and the Rickard family, Jeff, Kimberly, Michael, Noah, and Lydia. So when we invite people to become members of our congregation, we ask them a question about uh, will they support this congregation, and it's become my tradition to also ask the congregation if you will then make the same pledge to the families that are joining. So I ask you this morning, will you support the Thompson family and the Rickard family with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If you will, say, we will. Now I offer a prayer of thanks. This was written by Zalman Shachter Shalomi, a rabbi who has uh, dedicated his life to recording the prayers of his people. And uh, this is one of my favorite prayer, from one of my favorite prayer books. Thank you, God of eternity, for the great wonder of your creation, for the earth, the stars, the sun and moon, and the beauty of your universe, with which... In your great kindness, you have blessed us. Thank you for granting us life in all of its richness, for its brilliant moments of joy, which allow us to soar as with the birds, and even for its anguish and pain, which somehow seem to precipitate inner growth and change. For all these gifts, God, we are grateful. But thank you, especially, God, in your abundant love for having chosen to make us human beings. Blessed among all the fruits of your creation with minds to reason, with minds to seek truth and justice, 
with souls which can feel pain, ecstasy, and compassion, and have freedom to choose life and goodness over cruelty and destruction. We thank you for blessing us with hearts which can love and care and reach out to the, touch the hearts of sisters and brothers. As together we walk through the years of our lives, as together we walk with you. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John. I invite you to once again take a deep breath. Think about the Holy Spirit filling your lungs and consider how the Spirit might be speaking to you through these words. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority, over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And this is the gift of Scripture for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What Sadie just read for us is a beautiful thanksgiving prayer from Jesus to God, thanking God for a very general gift, uh, everything, and a very specific gift. And as we walk through the message today, I'll be talking about uh, what I think Jesus was uh, saying thanks for. But during this time, I'd like you also to post in the comments, what are you thankful for? What gifts has God given to you? What gifts have people or maybe what gifts has God given to you through people, uh, the people in your lives who have, uh, who have been the face of God for you. Uh, I'm going to share stories this morning. Uh, I'll also share perspectives on the scripture reading. Um, and begin, I want to begin with that general gift. Jesus prays, now they know everything you have given me is from you. Everything is from you. What, a, what, an incredible, uh, what an incredible idea for us to, to think about this morning. Everything is from God. Everything we have, our gifts, our talents, um, the, the, uh, the friends in our lives. Um, if we stop to think about how we got to where we are, we realize we didn't do it on our own. And that's one of the challenges with having been born in America because from pretty much uh, the first words we hear, people are telling us, you can be anything you want to be. You have to do it on your own. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Be a rugged individualist. And the reality is we don't get anywhere on our own. Um, our lives are, are gifts of relationship. And, uh, and as I was visiting with friends this past week, actually, uh, my adopted grandparents and, and mothers and fathers, uh, this congregation has given me so many parents, so many grandparents. I never knew my grandparents. Well, I, I knew them, but I, I didn't have good relationships with them because they lived so far away. But in this congregation, oh, I have so many parents and grandparents. One of them, um, and I've talked about Mary May several times uh, in worship, uh, she's just Oh, I just love Mary May so much, and she is truly my grandma. Um, 
I got a handwritten note from her uh, about two weeks ago, and uh, uh, her, she had given it to her daughter and had, had her daughter drop it off at the church, and it said, Eric, before you leave, I have to see you. A phone call won't do. I need to see you before you go. Ah, oh, what a gift of love to have somebody care about you that much. So as I visited with Mary May and listened to her stories, I realized what I was hearing is just her reciting all of the gifts that she had, or so many of the gifts that she had received in her life, gifts of, uh, of value, uh, gift of values that her parents gave her. She said the first uh, gifts that she remembers receiving are the gifts of the value of hard work, the gifts of the value of an education. Uh, hard work, she said she remembers picking cotton in, um, uh, uh, as her family were sharecroppers, and uh, the whole family worked picking cotton or uh, uh, raising the animals. And she said that picking cotton gave her so much joy. She, just, she said she had friends that would complain about hating to pick cotton, but she loved it. Uh, She loved it because she got to help her family. She was not just picking cotton. She was helping feed her family. And she got tremendous joy out of being given that responsibility. Uh, Parents teaching her the value of hard work and loving what you do no matter what it is. Uh, Parents insisted that she got an education. Uh, Not many women uh, who are Mary May's age were blessed with the gift of an education. It just wasn't something that women did when she was in her 20s. But her parents insisted, and she told me that she also received the gift of incredible teachers and, that motivated her, wouldn't let her, uh, wouldn't let her fail. They continued to pick her up and, and challenge her, and she took that gift of an education and turned it into a way of life. And she took that love of work, that love of being a teacher, and turned it into a way of life. And only God knows how many lives Mary May touched over her career as a teacher, but she was so good at her job that they named a school after her. She was never an administrator. She's only a teacher, only a teacher, right? She was a teacher who loved her children so much and was recognized as the best teacher in the community because of, uh, because of that love. Mary May also has this incredible attitude, this unbelievable positive attitude. Uh, When I walked into her home, she says, Eric, do you know how many years young I am? Yeah, how many years young? She's not old. She's 97 years young. Uh, Just to be in her presence is to be filled with her exuberance and joy. Uh, Mary May is my adopted grandma, and uh, I want to tell you about my adopted mom. Uh, Sarah Bainbridge, she even calls herself my mom. I was talking to Sarah this week because I heard through the grapevine that she had gotten married. Yeah, I know. She didn't tell me either. A friend had to call and say, hey, did you know Sarah got married? So I called Sarah and congratulated her on, uh, on her wedding to David. Uh, she had met David, I believe, in November. I think that's the first time that, uh, that I met David. And uh, I... Uh, I congratulated Sarah on the wedding, and she said, you know, Eric, people are saying that, boy, that was a really fast courtship. You guys got married in a hurry. She said, no, we didn't. The time was right. The honeysuckle was blooming. What a gift. What a gift to find someone that loves you so much that standing in the fragrance of the honeysuckle, and you both realize that we have to get married now before this fragrance flares fades away. We can't wait until it blooms next year. Let's get married now. And Sarah said that they feel so much joy together. They laugh and they laugh and they laugh. Not only are are they receiving the gift of the seasons, they're receiving the gift of relationship. And that's the other gift that Jesus talks about in his prayer. He says, after, John writes, after Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. Now, you may be wondering why I say that's a prayer for thanks for relationship, uh, but let me explain. Eternal life for John is one of the most important phrases he uses. He uses it 17 times in his gospel. Compare that to Matthew who writes eternal life four times, Luke three times, and Mark twice. 
John has a really powerful meaning that he wants us to pay attention to. And he doesn't just hope that we understand what he means by eternal life. He defines it for us twice. The first time he defines it is in John 12, verses 49 and 50. Jesus is speaking, For I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. Jesus is in relationship with God, a relationship so intimate that he knows everything comes from God. Eternal life for Jesus is a relationship. And then in the reading that Sadie read for us this morning, chapter 17, verse 3, after Jesus prays for the gift of eternal life, he says this. He defines eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is to know God, to be in relationship with God, to be in relationship with Jesus. How to know God, how to know God. Is there any gift greater than to be in relationship with God? St. Catherine of Siena Put it this way, when we are in relationship with God, all the way to heaven is heaven. I thank Ken for introducing that to me in in one of uh, the worship services earlier this spring. What a beautiful line, right? When When we are in relationship with God, all the way to heaven is heaven. Heaven, recognizing the gifts that we have received, uh, the constant gifts. Jesus is inviting us this morning to recognize and say thanks for every gift we have received from God. He is asking us to recognize that when we're in relationship with God, all the way to heaven is heaven, or as he specifically put it, the kingdom of God is at hand. Be in relationship with God and enter the kingdom. Amen. Not to ask you for some money. Uh, as I do this, I want to say a special thank you uh, for being able to participate in the confirmation. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Brooke. Um, what these two women have done uh, with our youth and children in this church is phenomenal. It is such a joy to work with incredible professionals. Our staff, um, I've met a lot of staff members at a lot of churches, and I want to tell you, our staff is the best I have ever worked with, ever seen, ever been with. And, uh, and yesterday, Sadie taught me how to do a confirmation service. It was phenomenal. Um, when you give, you are giving to support a, a community, not a building. Uh, though we do need to pay for the building so that we can reach the community, but you're supporting so many lives. You are touching so many lives. Your financial gift is a gift that will transform lives for generations to come. So please give generously. You can go to our website, click on the giving, and you will see all of the ways to give online. I've played the teacher, the preacher, the guru Maintaining postures, separating me and you As if the thoughts of God were mine and mine to speak I've listened with an agenda so I could prove All of the things I believe to be true Just to hide the fear of being weak Burn the scorecards, balance out the scales We are one when distracted by our different sails Underneath what's detectable with eyes Every particle's vibrating with the same light 
If we keep running around deciding who's right and wrong Then tell me where are we headed, how can we all belong When all our logic is colliding and it's constantly dividing me from you Forget those eager protestations on your tongue Shut your brain up long enough to hear the lowly hum Underneath what's detectable with eyes Every particle's vibrating with the one going to give some uh, shout outs here and uh, a little feedback for you from uh, all those wonderful things that you've been commenting and sharing along. We thank you all so much for tuning in. Y'all give it up for Brooke. We have so many things to talk about this morning. Um, I'm going to start off with a um, reiterance of how wonderful confirmation was yesterday and what a privilege it was to be any part of that. Uh, we also want to thank Katie Bloodworth for being there and bringing a wonderful treat for all of our confirmands. So they, since they didn't get to serve communion that day, they got to take home a pie to enjoy with their families. Um, and our confirmands have, are listed, and I want to give you those names. Ella Kate Perry, Audrey Thompson, Judd Cathcart, Soraya Germain, Jada Shepard, Katie Bearden, Lily Kate Caldwell, Aiden Reed, Michael Rickard, Uma Kyles, Aaron Graham, and Nathan Adams. So we want to say a big congratulations to all of you, and we are excited for your leadership in our church. Um, and I wanted to... I don't even know where to start today. I'm going to start with a few shout outs before we get to the gift section. And just to say thank you for watching and commenting today. I know you've been there in the past, but um, when you comment sometimes and I see it, I'm like, oh, I want to say hi to these people. So we want to say hello to Heather Conley, Charlotte Stacy, Ellie Sharp, Laura Lynn Van Hoos, Dixie Spears, Julie Doverspike, Tim and Vicki Roberts. Um, also, Dee Dee Spite, who tuned in and she said, Today's message was just excellent, Eric. Alice Haney, loving this trio. We all are. Uh, Neil is here, and Donna is on call. Our prayers were with Donna Johnson this morning and all other health professionals. Sandra Hutchin said, Hutchins said, good morning, worship leaders. Sharon Woodworth said, the church may be closed, but God is always with us. God has been making house calls. And I thought that was really cool. And there were so many welcomes and affirmations for the Thompson and Rickard family. And we thank you for being there for them virtually this way. Um, and now our gifts that you lifted up. There were so many people who lifted up their children. And you are each so special. Um, 
and we thank you for lifting up all of your families. Susan Sullivan and Justin um, lifted up their family and kids and so much more. Sandra Hutchinson said she is thankful for the gift of space that FUMC shares with Second Street Pantry. Susan Pickle said the gifts of knowledge, kindness, and friendship. We lift up all the gifts of blended families who work out so beautifully. Wylene Cohagen, uh, through her daughter, said that she is thankful for the gift of a long marriage that's produced three children and the gift of enjoying them and their families now and also a loving church family. Cynthia Ram said her family, friends, her job, and her church. Maribel Viscara said the gift of lifting others up. And Deb Willem said, the gift of love, of a loving and caring church and its people bound together by our love of Christ who first loved us. Beautiful gifts this morning. I'm looking at Eric because this is the first he gets to hear of it today. And it is such an honor to read these messages. We also have a few ways that you can give to the church during this time that we are all spread out. I hope that you checked your e-news this week, uh, and there's so many, so much information there. First of which is a survey that we would ask that you all take, and that just is something that tells us how you feel about the reopening of the church and where you are at this time. It will give us guidance and help us make decisions that will impact our community. You can also um, continue honoring all these gifts that you've been blessed with and much more by giving to the church uh, through your offering. But also, we have a lot of work that can be done at the church. So if you and your family are tired of being at home and would like to venture out, you can contact the church office and Tony will give you an idea of things that could be done around church and set up a time for you to come and be here isolated you won't be around anyone there's painting there's yard work there's cleaning so something for everyone and also we want to thank you for those who mentioned that the sound is great today a big thank you to adam davini who's been working on our interim sound solution while we have ordered ken has been working on ordering new sound equipment so it will continue to get better and our video equipment is on order too and so our video quality will be increasing over the weeks to come thank you so much Join together in one more song. This is how great is our God. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, that all the earth rejoices, all the earth rejoices. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? We all will see how great, how great is our God.
Thank you to everyone who shared our service this morning. You still have time to share our service while we're live or anytime throughout the day. Come back and watch it. We had 15 shares and you all mean a lot to us. And today I ask that you receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Vibrating with the one